it's Christmas time, so let's take a look at the science behind a festive level from gaming's past. But which Christmassy game should I take a look at? I could look at Yeti Skiing Adventures in 1991 Ski Free, or I could investigate the Snow Kingdom from Super Mario Odyssey to see how long Mario would be able to survive in those freezing waters. But how about something in between? Let's look into my favourite festive level in the whole of gaming history, filled with snowmen, presents and a walrus racing a bear on a sled. If you haven't heard of Banjo-Kazooie before, then you were probably really confused by the reaction to them being introduced to Smash Bros Ultimate back in June of 2019. This bear and bird duo was thrust into the world by UK Nintendo developer Rare in 1998. You might remember Rareware from such games as Donkey Kong Country, Diddy Kong Racing and Conker's Bad Fur Day, the game about a violent squirrel getting over a hangover. You may also know that Rare is a company that puts eyes on everything, and I mean everything, jigsaw pieces, music notes and everyday fruit and veg. The plot of Banjo-Kazooie is really very simple, like something taken out of a weird little fairy tale complete with witches and shamans and bears that turn into washing machines. Similar to classic platformers like Super Mario 64, Banjo-Kazooie features our intrepid pair journeying through world after world of enemies, collecting shiny things to open doors on their way to take on the villainous Gruntilda. Whilst at first this might make Banjo-Kazooie seem like a generic platformer, it was able to differentiate itself by adding a great deal to the foundations that games like Super Mario 64 laid out. This included a wide variety of special moves that Banjo and Kazooie could unlock as they went from world to world, as well as unique and charming world designs that offered a lot more than Mario 64. The worlds in Banjo Kazooie tended to diverge from the typical grass, ice, desert, lava and occasional haunted houses by introducing sewers filled with giant mechanical sharks and adding a twist to typical forest worlds by introducing time travelling exploits. Banjo also filled these worlds with a ton of charming characters, with the worlds inside Gruntilda's tower being filled to the brim with characters that Banjo and Kazooie needed to help out along their quest. Out of all of the levels stuck inside Gruntilda's tower, Freeze Easy Peak is by far the best in terms of its theming, starting with an entrance which is inside of a giant advent calendar which contains 1-ups, jiggies and other items that Banjo can use inside levels to get around Gruntilda's tower. But once you get inside, this world is just Christmas left, right and centre, with missions including collecting presents for polar bears wearing fancy checkered scarves, protecting Christmas lights from the villainous twinkly munchers, and finally, the topic of today's video, climbing a giant snowman in the middle of the world in order to get a couple of jiggies from his pipe, buttons, and sliding down his scarf to wake up a snoozing bear. For today's video, what we're going to do is analyse this snow construct and try and figure out a few things about it. First of all, how big it is, secondly, how heavy it is, and finally, is it possible to make a snowman as big as the one featured in Freeze Easy Peak? In order to figure out the size of this giant snowman, we're going to have to do a few measurements. And to make this a little bit easier, we're only going to be measuring the size of the snow that makes up the snowman, ignoring the giant top hat, scarf, broom and buttons. We'll only be taking the volume of the head, body and two stubby snowman feet into account. In order to figure out any of these sizes, we first need to figure out how tall Banjo is. To do this, we need a definitive scale to work from. We can be incredibly grateful that Banjo was introduced in Smash Bros Ultimate, as its training stage has a meter scale on the background. According to this scale, Banjo is 1 meter 55 centimeters or 5 foot 1 inch tall. When comparing Banjo's height to Link's height, which we established as being 5 feet 2 inches in a previous video, we find that this scale is pretty accurate with Link being between 5 foot 2 and 5 foot 3 inches tall on the Smash Bros scale. From here, we can take it to in-game models. Using 3D modeling software called SketchUp, I placed a pre-created model of Banjo into an accurate recreation of Freeze Easy Peak, and then placed him next to the snowman in order to make sure the world was in scale with the in-game version, ensuring Banjo's height in the software was 1.55 meters. From this scale, it was easy to work out the different snowball diameters that we're working with. The two snow legs were 13 meters in diameter, the body was 36 meters in diameter, and finally the head was 18 meters in diameter. Now that we have these diameters, we can figure out the volumes of the spheres using the equation 
volume is equal to 4 thirds multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius of the sphere cubed. The snowman's feet both have a radius of 6.5 meters and this leads to them having a volume of 1150 meters cubed. We have two of those so let's double that volume to get a total volume of 2300 meters cubed. Then we need to add the volume of our 36 meter body. This gives us a radius of 18 meters and a volume of 24,429 meters cubed. And finally, we calculate the volume for our 18 meter diameter head, which has a radius of 9 meters, giving us a volume of 3,053.62 meters cubed. Add all of these volumes together and we get a total snowman volume of 29,781 meters cubed. Now that's a lot of snow, and to put it into perspective, let's compare it to some real world structures. Let's start by comparing the snowman to the biggest animal in existence, the blue whale, which has a volume of 71 cubic meters. Okay, so from that, it's obvious that the animal world doesn't really measure up, so how about we look at some man-made structures? Let's start in the UK and compare our snowman to the Elizabeth Tower, the part of the Palace of Westminster where Big Ben is kept. This tower is the third tallest freestanding clock tower in the world and has a volume of 4,639 meters cubed, meaning that the entirety of Big Ben could fit inside the snowman's stomach. But what about the tallest building in the world? Well, that would be Burj Khalifa from the United Arab Emirates, a building that has a volume of a staggering 330,000 cubic meters, meaning that our snowman barely has enough snow to fill up less than a tenth of this Goliath structure. Okay, now we have some comparisons, but whilst this is all very interesting and helps put this into perspective, you might be asking, what does it all mean? And more importantly, could this snow monolith be made in the real world? A good way to figure this out would be to calculate the mass of snow that would be needed to produce a giant snowman like the one in Freeze Easy Peak. Whilst this might seem simple, there's a surprising amount to consider when building structures out of snow, specifically its physical properties. When it comes to making good strong snowmen, you want to consider how wet or dry the snow is, which is an odd way to put it given that it's all frozen water, and this really doesn't like the sort of thing that scientists would really care about. Despite that, however, physicists classify snow based on its moisture content, specifically taking note of the amount of free water relative to crystals of ice, rather than how much water would be produced if the snow were to melt. Naturally, as this scale was put together by scientists, you can enjoy only the most scientific of names for the five categories of snow. The first category is dry snow. This snow contains no excess water at all. Following this comes moist snow, snow that contains less than 3% water. Then wet snow that contains 3 to 8%, very wet snow that contains 8 to 15%, and finally the most scientific sounding slush snow that contains over 15% of water. According to this scale and a snow scientist from the Montana State University, the moist to wet snow is the most ideal for snowman building, with dry snow just being loose powder that doesn't stick together and slush snow being too fluid to hold shape. You can think of the free water with the crystals as a glue you want to be there to stick the crystals together. The amount of water in snow depends on surrounding air temperature as well as its crystal structure. Whilst you would normally think of snow as being made of traditional snowflakes called dendrites, in reality it's a bit more complicated than that, with snow coming in two distinct shapes, plates and columns. Wet and moist snow will tend to fall at around 0 degrees Celsius, and the colder it gets the drier the snow will tend to be because more water particles freeze into crystals. The shape of this drier snow will also change in colder conditions, with flat plate shapes with a smaller surface area being produced and that's going to be even worse for producing snowballs and snowmen. Once our wet snow has fallen, it's ready to be rolled into the balls that will make up our giant snowman. Spheres are the best building blocks for snowmen owing to the pressure and force that packing snow together exerts on ice crystals. This causes some of the crystals to melt during construction and after melting the water crystals will crystallize again, binding together the snowball. The problem when it comes to our giant snow friend, a freeze easy peak, is that there's an upper limit to the size of snow spheres related to the water content of the snow. As the snowball grows, it becomes more and more difficult to apply sufficient pressure to adequately pack the ice crystals. This could potentially result in an unstable structure for our snowman's body. As to why this is important, different snows have different densities, and we can use these to figure out the mass of our snowballs to see just how much mass, and therefore force, that 63 meter snowball is exerting on the snowman's legs. 
This chart from a 1994 paper called The Physics of Glaciers, we find that damp snow has a density in the region of 100 and 200 kilograms per meter cubed. Multiplying our volume of 24,429 cubic meters by the density of 150 kilograms per cubic meter gives us a mass of 3,664,350 grams of snow. Now to put that mass in context, that's equal to over 3 million litres of water, more than enough to fill one and a half Olympic sized swimming pools. Now it shouldn't be surprising to anyone that the body isn't going to be held up by the two little stubby legs. In fact, I doubt the body would be able to keep itself together. As mentioned earlier, the bigger a snowball gets, the less likely it is to stay together. And when this snowman falls apart, anyone near it should run like hell, because it's going to come down in one big avalanche of snow and ice. So there we go. It turns out snow is a bit more complicated than simple flakes, and whilst giant snowmen are a ton of fun, they are not the most realistic part of this game that features Banjo playing bears and blubbering hippos that talk in gibberish. But despite that, Banjo Kazooie and Freeze Easy Peak is still my favourite festive level in the whole of gaming. Again, if you haven't played the game already, I can definitely recommend it, especially around Christmas time. As always, if you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to help combat the ever-changing and frustrating YouTube algorithm, then make sure to share the video to help my channel grow. If you have any scientific subject or topic that you'd like to see me cover in the future, then please tell me in the comments down below. As well as that, follow me on Twitter to get updates on the latest science of videos, and join my Discord for chats about science, gaming and more. But until next time, this has been the Science of Banjo-Kazooie. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you're looking for game based content then you can join me over on Twitch, where I livestream 3 times a week playing all manner of games suggested by the community. Or if you want to support the channel even further, then you can also contribute to my Patreon, where you'll get behind the scenes access to the creation of all videos, as well as being able to vote on what the next science of video will be.